Today, we'll be looking at how scientists just achieved room temperature superconductivity for the first time. If you're new to this channel, welcome. This is Mr. Singularity, where we explore the scientific and technological breakthroughs shaping the future as we know it. Superconductivity may be the secret to revolutionary future developments in storage, computation, and transport, but so far this has only happened in products that are cooled near to absolute zero. Researchers have now developed the first ever room temperature superconductor. When the current travels through the conductor, it faces resistance, which dissipates usable energy into waste heat and decreases the performance of all real-world electronics. But in 1911, Dutch physicist Heike Kamerling Onis discovered that this was not the case. When the mercury wire was cooled to just above absolute zero, the resistance suddenly vanished. Over the next several decades, superconductivity was observed in other supercooled products, and in 1933, researchers noticed that superconductors even ejected magnetic fields. This implies that the external magnetic fields, which usually move through just about everything, cannot reach the interior of the superconductor and stay on the top. These two qualities open up a broad variety of possibilities, including lossless power lines and electrical circuits, ultra-sensitive sensors, and extremely strong magnets that could be used to levitate trains or create super-efficient turbines. Superconductors are at the core of some of today's most innovative developments, from quantum computers to MRI scanners and the Massive Hadron Collider. The only concern is that they need heavy, expensive, and energy-saving cooling equipment that severely restricts where it can be used. But now, researchers at the University of Rochester have shown superconductivity at a comparatively balmy temperature of 15 degrees Celsius. Because of the low temperature limits, materials with such extraordinary properties have not completely transformed the world as many might have imagined, said lead researcher Ranga Dias in a press release. Our discovery will break down these barriers and open the door to a number of potential applications. The discovery outlined in Nature comes with some big caveats. Just a limited quantity of material could be generated by the team, about the same volume as a single droplet from an inkjet printer. And to get it to superconduct, they had to squeeze it between two diamonds to build pressures equal to three quarters of those present in the middle of the planet. The researchers are still uncertain as to the precise type of information they've generated. They mixed a combination of hydrogen, carbon, and sulfur and then shot a laser to cause a chemical reaction and create a crystal. But since all these components have very tiny atoms, it has not been possible to find out how they are organized or what the chemical composition of the substance could be. However, the effect is a big leap forward for high temperature superconductors. It continues a series of developments founded on the basis of Cornell University physicist Neil Ashcroft's projections that hydrogen-rich materials are a viable path to room temperature conductivity, but the previous record of negative 13 Celsius has been blown out of the water. However, in order to discover practical applications, researchers will have to find a way to reduce the pressure needed to achieve superconductivity. This would take a deeper understanding of the properties of the material they've made. However, they say there's a lot of space for tuning their formula to get closer to the atmospheric pressures. How fast it might be is anyone's guess, but the researchers seem optimistic and have set up a startup called Unearthly Materials to commercialize their work. If they have their way, electrical resistance will quickly be a thing of the past. If you made it this far in the video, thank you, and welcome to the end of the video club. What's your take on this? Let me know down in the comments below and check out one of these other videos. This has been Mr. Singularity, and I'll see you on the next one.